All right, people. Thank you again for enjoying me. <laughs> enjoying me. Thanks again for joining me on another one of Chris's beer reviews. This is my third one in a row, so bear with me. I don't normally do um, consecutive beer reviews, but I'll be completely honest with you. When I got a gift pack and I got a, enough bread and crackers in between to clear my palate, it doesn't matter how many beer reviews I do. Um, I'm killing off a, a gift pack here, and it is very difficult to come by such a gift pack. Um, to get a little bit more into detail before I drink anything, if you want to see the entire gift pack, again, please go to my beer review for the left, and it says Radio, which is supposed to be... How do we say it? I can't even think straight. Translated... I was thinking converted, I don't know why. Uh, it's supposed to be translated into Ruby. Now, if you, uh, you know, can't find my beer review because, you know, Ruby, for some reason, isn't in the tags or something stupid like that. <coughs> Radius is spelled R-A-D-I-E-U-S-E. -E. Now, this is going in the fridge, and it is going to be enjoyed at another time. One thing I was not able to point out on these beers, I'm just figuring it out now. That's why you gotta watch all three, man. <laughs> this was originally brewed in 1240. Like, come on. We're talking about how many decades ago? It's pretty redonkulous. Anyways, I did the blonde. It was a 6.6% .6 beer review. And now I'm working my way down to the brune, which is a 6.5% ABV. The Ruby was an 8.2% ABV, so I've just been gradually working my way down. And judging by uh, my slip-ups on my uh, speech here, you can understand why that seems to be the, the way to go. <laughs> um, I know they say, beer before liquor, never been sicker. Um, liquor before beer, in the clear. So... If you start at the strongest alcohol content and work your way down, it should be the better for you. That's what I learned. Oh! Bullseye! Anyways, this is balcony temperature. I, I took it off the balcony about 20 minutes ago, judging by my reviews, and it appears to be the, the Celsius that is recommended for this beer, which is between 5 and... 6 uh, degrees Celsius. It's a 330 milliliter bottle at 6.5% ABV and the expiry date, just like the other two, has been October 2011. So we're doing good. Um, the only thing that I, I, I'm I really upset with is that every single one of these beers comes with this like traditional, and I'm saying traditional because I, I, I'm familiar with Lef and or Lefe and ever since high school, this freaking frilly stuff has been on the bottle. And one thing that happened, like on my first review, I was pulling out you know frilly stuff from from uh, from the glass because it fell into the glass. So I'm gonna do us a favor. I'm gonna put the glass aside. I'm gonna pop the cap, the plain gold cap. I'm gonna hope that no frilly stuff gets inside that glass ever again. Oh, look at that! That's probably the best pop we've had out of all of them. All other two. <laughs> I'm not really picking up on too many aromas. And, you know, I'm t I'll tell you this. I'm not a huge blonde fan. Like, I'm, I'm not talking about women here. I'm talking about beer. Um, I'm not a big blonde beer fan. They're usually too wheaty. And the last blonde that I have, so phenomenal, it probably goes down in the books as one of my favorites. I'm just pouring water onto my little Kleenex there. All right, people, what I learned from the first review, aside from not touching the glass, aside from not touching the head, um, you got to pour at a 45 degree angle. And unlike most beers, where you got to pour it slowly, I find that this one you gotta have like a real like medium pour because it, it says to get like a three finger head um, out of your pour uh, in order to maintain the uh, flavors and aromas. So 
I know you might not like the way I'm about to pour this, but this is the way that it's supposed to be poured. See what I'm saying? See what I'm saying? That's what I'm talking about. Oh, look at that. Yeast. Yeast. <laughs> I don't think anybody's ever combined with yeast before. That's uh that's a first. Good times. Alright. Surprisingly, out of all the beers that I've had so far, this one this one has the wheaty approach. And I'm look how dark it is, man. This is literally like it says brune, brown, but this looks just like your typical dark beer. The only brown that I'm getting out of the entire glass, and you can't really see it. I'm trying to help you all out here. There's a tint of brown right at the bottom. I can see it on my side, and strangely enough, on my side, it even also looks darker than the ruby. It's pretty uh, redonkulous, if you, uh, if you ask me. Oh yeah, you know what? Out of the three, out of the three, believe it or not, this one tastes the most like barley. There was no barley taste in the blonde. There was a very hint of barley taste in the ruby. Also, aside from the other two flavors, this one also has a slight bit of uh, crisp flavor on the aftertaste, but it goes down very much like a wheaty, dark lager. I can't say ale. Lager. There is absolutely nothing wrong with this beer, but because of the fact that I favor floral hops amongst any wheaty beer, the Blonde is my favorite of the three. I can't even say out of the three. I am not a blonde beer drinker, but the blonde lef, or should I say lefe, beer is the one that tastes the best. I could drink that one all day and all night, but I won't because I don't really normally drink that much. <laughs> now, it has a... <coughs> Very, you know what? It has a dark complexion, right? It has, it looks like it's going to be a medium bodied beer, but it goes down quite lightly. Um, but I am still going to officially categorize it as a medium bodied beer. Um, it's 6.5% ABV. It tastes like a six. I'll give you that. I was even going to go lower than that. Yeah. I was going to go lower than that. Kool-Aid. But I can't be mistaken. I'm really happy that they, they told you to give such a, an amount of head because look. Look at this now. The one thing I have to complain about this beer is if you're pouring a three finger head on a beer I would really like that head to stick around a lot longer. But the one thing I can say the most about this beer, uh, yet again, I will repeat, um, I don't even know if I said this in this review, but I have thoroughly rinsed this glass out for all of its imperfections. I'm surprised, like sure, I can see my freaking like, you know, chapstick on the, on the, on the sides. Very, very little bit of chapstick, but I wasn't really focusing on the rim. Um, this has uh, got pretty cool lace for uh, your average beer. Um, this is the kind of lace that I do prefer in a beer. If you put this, this lace in with my blonde beer, it would probably, I probably would have given the, the blonde uh, four and a half out of five, um, for cripes sake. That's right, cripes, cripes sake. Yeah, no charge.
No tip. But then again, there is nothing wrong with this. Something I also taste in it is I'm also getting uh, a lot of malts, um, which isn't too much that I could say for the Ruby and the Blonde. This one has the significant malts that the other two do not have. Yeah. Wow. When you get to the third beer, you really start burping, don't you? If you're wondering where I got this band-aid from, I was at work today and I was writing a huge report on some crazy incident that happened at work and I just so happened to be in such a rush that I freaking stuck both ends of the staple into my finger. I haven't done that since I was a kid in my mom's like real estate business office where I was an idiot and I was just like, cook, what does this do? But today, I, I don't even know how it happened. I was trying to fix the stapler and I got freaking stapled. Donculus. Oh, getting to the ending of the line. Surprisingly, as amazing as the lace looked at the beginning, it's really starting to go down. Not necessarily here. Okay, let's let's put it this way. I'm drinking from this side. And the side that drops all the beer, um, like in regards to the direction that I'm pouring, there is almost no lace. So I still wish the lace was a little bit more prominent. You can't, you can't be too picky about these things, though, because realistically, to brew a beer, any kind of beer is freaking... You, you can make an easy beer, you can make a complicated beer, but when you got beers that have been going around since, like, what was the date? 1240. Do you think I'm going to care about, like, that little bit of lace that's missing from the glass? I don't think so. All right, people, this is uh, getting quite long. I've uh, turned this into a story. I'm going to finish up. Bottoms up! Yay! I never do that freaking sound. Please. Forgive me. All right, people. Thank you for joining me on another one of Chris's beer reviews. Don't drink and drive, but drink responsibly. Cheers.